You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm your host, Seth Goldstein. I'm with Matt Weintraub, the Chief Deputy District Attorney of Bucks County. Is that correct, Matt? That's right. That's right. Before we get started, let me really quickly thank our sponsors, aweber.com, getflywheel.com, Zoho Mail, and Wistia. Check them out online and give them some business because they help us do our business. <laughs> and also, if you want to help fund the podcast network, Go over to patreon.com slash phillytechorg, and you can throw us a dollar a month and help us out. So, Matt, how's it going? It's going pretty well. So, Bucks County is just north of Philadelphia, and you're in Doylestown, correct? That's right. That's the county seat of Bucks County. And you got a nice view of the courthouse behind you. Oh, I'm in the courthouse. I have a nice view from the courthouse. Oh, you're in the courthouse. Right? We got the, the round part of the courthouse behind you. It's a good view. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but we're we're attached. We're all You're attached. attached. Here. You're attached. But, but we'll be moving very shortly. Yeah, are you, are you moving? Yeah, the, the, there's a new courthouse being built right across the street. Are your offices moving over there too? Yeah, we're expected to move in about three weeks. So you gotta clean up your desk. I know. <laughs> but crime doesn't take a holiday, so there still you go. Prosecuting while we're over here. There you go, my friend. There you go. So, so the the Bucks County DA's office does a lot with technology, right? I mean, you I, you have a um, Vine account, which I think is kind of humorous. We do a lot with technology, and uh, as prosecutors, we have to be up on the latest technology because that's what the criminals are using. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, so uh, so you're on Facebook, correct? We have a Facebook account. We have a Vine account, which obviously is attached to our Twitter account yeah we try to be pretty progressive here because that's what the public expects nowadays now, now do you commonly get into discussions with people on on these platforms if they write you or no never in fact uh, people do try to engage us in discussions uh, we don't mind if discussions are had there but we never engage on any of these social media it's only for output it's not really for engagement or input no no why is that because it's just not a good medium. There's a, a lot of trolls out there, as I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> trolls, yeah. uh, there are people out there that just want to bait you into some kind of a debate. And if you can't control the medium or the message, it's, it's very difficult to have a fair dialogue. So what we do is we invite people to contact us on the phone. And if they have a, an issue that they want to address with us, we ad address it that way. But we, we never respond to any posts on our Facebook or on our uh, Twitter, or even to any of our vines. Now, so let's say someone writes you on Facebook. Would you would, would someone say, "Hey, contact us here" uh, as a response, or is it more just like they're not going to get a response, and then they're just going to have to call you? We've debated that a couple of times mm -hmm. because we've gotten some pretty uh, pretty pointed posts mm -hmm. on there and we've just made a, a conscious decision to post a a warning on our social medium to, that says that we will not engage and if you want to engage with mm -hmm. somebody live you should call us so Makes we, sense. we stick by that pop yeah, so, all right so so think about that are you on instagram at all no not yet not yet Do you recommend that i think it's a good place to be okay i'm not sure how i mean I mean, especially after, the, unfortunately, the shootings in New York of the police officers, the the perpetrator who, the alleged perpetrator, I think that's the correct way of doing it. Um, I'm not sure. No doubt about it, Seth. He was the perpetrator. Oh, I, I know. But I'm trying to be fair here, but okay. So, but he, well, yeah, he posted about it he on. He wasn't fair to those cops. No, he was not. He was not. Um, so, so, so when did you guys get on social media? Like, what was the impetus to get on social media? I mean, obviously that's where you know criminals are, but what makes the DA decide to really like be forward thinking? That's a great question, Seth. Uh, we had a uh, I I attended a seminar. It was 
largely geared towards public information officers throughout the state uh, because I had an interest in learning more about social media and how we could be more interactive with the public. And that's what really generated the idea for me. And when I, when I learned what sorts of ways you, we could promote our positive messages, I came back to the office and spoke with a couple of our more tech savvy ADAs. And I knew we had a, a website and we still have a website, but it's, it's pretty static. It's, it's not user friendly. It's not interactive. And so we decided to create a Facebook page, create a Twitter account. And as you know, we do put some vines on there occasionally. We, we do need to be more active and more productive there, but that was the essence yeah. of it. And so Nothing, no we've actually gotten there. some compliments from some other eight, uh, DA's offices throughout the state. And I think we're one of the more active district attorney's offices on social media nowadays. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Have you found that uh -huh. the, the response has been very good with it? Like, have you heard positive, I mean, other than the trolls and stuff, have you heard like people call up and say, hey, I really liked your Vine, Matt, or I really liked, you know, have you read it? Have you read any of the comments that people have posted? I get a lot of comments from you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, about the Vines. But actually, yes, we, we've gotten a lot of positive oh, no. feedback about our social media presence and to be frank about it that's where you have to be if you're going to reach the public today you need to be on as many media as possible in order to reach the uh, the largest audience possible and frankly people just have an expectation that you're going to have a, a facebook presence or vine or twitter and as you said even at this point instagram so rather than fight that we've decided to embrace it i'm looking for something here we actually are, are trying to forward our agenda in the war against drugs, Yes. where we have now three options for people to contact us anonymously. We have a, can I hold a card up real fast? Sure, go oh, for it, please put it up. Work. It. Okay, uh, let's see. Here. Yeah, back, back Probably up. the graphics yeah. aren't great, but yeah. the essence of it is there are three ways to contact us now anonymously if you want to report a drug dealer. One of those is obviously telephone. Another one is via email, and another one is via text. So that's very cool. Stay tech savvy, so that we can engage with as large a segment of the population as possible. Now, how does that stay anonymous if they text you? There's a, a program hey. that will shield a person's phone number. Oh, so okay. we don't have access to their phone number. We can text back to them but we don't gain any information about their identity. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it costs, it costs some money. The county actually funded us for two years at about $5,000, but obviously it's well worth it for us, even if we just get a couple of tips, and we've gotten quite a few. So it's just paid for itself, which is good. So that's a good thing. So uh, what, else, what else are you doing over the technology over in the DA's office? It's kind of, kind of a broad stroke question, but, you know. No, that's okay. We, we use technology in a lot of our investigations. As you can imagine, nowadays, every crime has some kind of a technology component. Everybody has a computer in their pocket, their cell phone. So we use a lot of uh, technological investigative resources. We, we, we can obviously track people by their cell phones. We can look at, at the content of somebody's cell phone. If, if we have permission from the courts. So those are some of the things we can do. We can backtrack where a person has been throughout the course of a day or a week, a month or a year by checking their cell site information, their cell tower information. And these are all uh, techniques that I've used uh, to prosecute murderers in a recent murder case that I've, I've had. Oh, that, that's very interesting. Now, with the recent, I mean, I kind of wouldn't be a good journalist if I didn't bring this up, but with the recent um, revelations with Edward Snowden and how, yes, it's been the NSA, they're, you know, they're federal government and all that, but there has been some trickle down to the local police departments and maybe not the DA's office, but you are a crime fighter, you know, that, um, how has that affected your abilities to fight crime, like, at least in the public in the public's eye like are they more skeptical of you guys or no i think bucks county by and large is very receptive to law enforcement 
So we don't have any issues within Bucks County itself where we sometimes have issues are with the larger providers. For example, Apple will no longer allow us to break into uh, an iPhone, even when we have an appropriate court order. Yeah, because Android's coming that way too, yeah. Yeah, they're trying to protect the proprietary information of the user. And that's going to actually inhibit us uh, to some degree in law enforcement, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it, it's double-edged sword. It's good for the user, but it's also bad for law enforcement. It's bad for the user because if they're the victims of a crime, you know, it, it's there's good and bad to everything, you know, so. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I love the privacy that I'm afforded, and I, I think government should largely stay out of our business, but that's only until I'm the victim of a crime. Then I want all the help I can get. And uh, everything is technologically driven now, so we do need access to to be able to break into some of these phones sometimes and we're not able to do that anymore absolutely absolutely well matt thank you for coming on the show we really appreciate it um where can they find you online i mean are you accessible online or do you where can they find you on vine and all the other places i am admittedly an infrequent poster on twitter but you can find me at ada wine trope i'm a follower tweet me out tweet you out <laughs> awesome very good well thank you matt for being on the show and if anyone has any questions is there any other way to reach you uh they certainly can contact us on the on the uh if they contact us right here at the district attorney's office not very technologically savvy but if you call the main number 215-348-6344 i'd be happy to answer any questions that you have Otherwise, if you if you tweet me a message, I'll be sure to get back to you. I'd uh, love to hear that. Awesome, Matt. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Seth. Have a great day.